Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at the Ferry Meadows Caravan and Motorhome Club site at Peterborough with the Pilot Van V600G Premium, their latest six metre van conversion. Now all the Pilot vans come in either standard or premium finish, so say this is the premium version and they offer models in the three main sizes of Fiat Ducato, the 5.4 metre, the 6 metre and the 6.36 metre van. To say this is the 6 metre, the one in the middle, which is a very, very popular size and it's got the most popular of all continental camper van layouts with the transverse double bed across the back. We'll go into more detail about the, the specification and the interior in a second, but one thing I should say is that this is a very, very high spec example. Prices for the V600G Premium start at £48,750. This one, however, is £61,500. Now, no sharp intake of breath, because actually that's a pretty good price for a van that's as fully loaded with spec as this. Hayes Leisure, the Pilot dealer in Birmingham who supplied this vehicle, actually say this is how they're finding customers want their vans because they're a younger clientele coming into these vehicles, buying a camper van, they want the bathroom and shower, but they also want all the automotive toys that are now available on the Fiat Ducato cab. And we'll come on to some of those later on in the video. Hayes Leisure have been selling Pilots from the outset in 1986 when they first brought Pilot to the UK. Now there are a wide range of Pilot dealers around the UK, but Hayes is still one of them. And this vehicle, well, as I say, it's a very high spec, black metallic paint, the alloy wheels, the 140 bhp engine upgrade, the awning, solar panel that you can't see on the roof, all of those are options, as are the electrically folding mirrors. So good, very high spec before we even go into the inside or look at the cab. Pilot offers its van models in six metallic paint finishes at extra cost and two non-metallic paint finishes. At the front you get a black grille surround, black headlights, black skid plate, all as standard and even front fog lights are included in the standard specification. On the premium models you also get this wide electric step for the sliding door. That automatically re retracts as soon as you turn the key so that's something you'll never have to worry about. And on a hot day like today, when there may be a few mozzies and wasps and things around, you'll be grateful for this fly screen that goes right across the sliding door as well. Another feature that I really like, although perhaps less noticeable on this black paint finish, are these very flush habitation windows, so much neater than the ones that stand proud and better for security as well. When it comes to the services, your fresh water filler is here, but the tank is inboard, 110 litres. That puts certain British camper vans to shame. And another area where you can see that Pilot is used to building coach builts, perhaps more than camper vans, although it's been building vans since 2012. So plenty of experience, really. Now. On a lot of camper vans you get a fiddly little waste tap, horrible mucky thing to use. Here it's like on a coach built T-handle, just pull it out and your wastewater drops into the appropriate emptying point. 80 litre wastewater tank and on this particular vehicle as an option it's heated and insulated so fully prepared for year-round camping. And if you want to uh, camp off-grid not only have you got the solar panels I mentioned, that's an option of course, but this one has been upgraded to two leisure batteries, 130 amp hours each. This style of camper van often appeals to people a bit younger and sportier than me. And this is the reason, plenty of storage under the bed at the back. 
with the bed down you've got a, an area 1.33 meters deep into the vehicle uh, 730 mil wide and 0.49 490 mil high now it could be higher if you didn't have this optional drawer underneath but I rather like that because it keeps things like your leveling wedges and your mains lead separate from your your bigger storage and even if you're not sporty well you can carry much bigger more comfortable outdoor chairs than you can in a lot of other camper vans over on this side you've also got your gas locker and that holds two 13 kilogram cylinders so more gas than a lot of other campers over on this side you've got access to your water pump that's where your fresh water tank is and you've also got an external shower just plug that in the attachment here and then give yourself a cooling hose down now you may have looked at this storage space and thought, hmm, that's not enough. I need more, I need more. So, fold away the mattress, three attached sections, all nice and easy, and just tip the center bed base and seat belt strap holds that upright. Now look, you've got full height storage. You've also got drawers on here, little cupboard over here, access to your fresh water tank and you can even remove the front section for long loads. So no shortage of storage then and I particularly like this optional drawer. Not so good, it's the lack of lashing points to secure any heavy gear that you may have at the back. And also, if you've got this area very full of stuff, outdoor chairs, barbecue, and so on, well, these drawers can be very hard to access. However, you won't need to carry an outside table. And this is why you don't need to carry a second table. Your internal table from the half net simply clips to the back of the kitchen unit. And you see what I mean about being able to carry your big outdoor chairs? Well, I can sit here in quite some comfort. Cheers. Now I've waffled on for far too long about some of the external features, so I'm sure you're really ready to see what this Pilot van is like inside. And moving up from a standard specification Pilot van to the premium model gives you quite a different look. You move away from wood style cabinets to these very modern looking predominantly white furniture with a flash of sort of turquoisey blue behind the travel seat. The upholstery comes in a choice of two fa finishes um, but this one is all black with part faux leather and part cloth. The alternative is more grey based. Another aspect of the premium model is this open cab, as Pilot calls it. So you lose the usual um, over cab shelf that's been part of Fiat Ducato specification for so long. And you get this full standing height right into the cab. Pilot says you don't lose any storage. Well, mm, you do. Um, you've got these little open pockets at the side, but they're not terribly useful because they haven't got any security nets or anything to keep anything actually in there. But I do like this effect. You've got a lot more feeling of space with this full headroom in the cab. And I do really like the automotive feel in this vehicle. The rear passenger seat is much more comfortable, much more shaped than in most rivals. You've also got, as part of the premium spec, this padded headlining and also this sort of padded trim over on the side wall. Plenty of lighting in here, these down lighters in the ceiling, both above the cab and above the dinette. These reading lights that are just touch on, touch off big roof light although it's a push-up type which I was surprised wasn't on a crank handle but generally the spec is very good 
if you want an over cab sunroof well, that is an option too but not fitted on this particular vehicle it's not only when you're traveling that you'll appreciate the extra shape in this half dunette seat it's more comfortable on site too whether you're relaxing or dining now the table is a little bit slim but it does extend of course and then there's enough room for four now as specified here this is a two berth camper but you can have an extra third berth made up in this seating area that's an extra cost option and it requires extra cushions now if you want to go beyond that you can have a pop top on the roof and that gives you a double bed upper ladder so two three or four berth options are possible but this one's just a two berth now beyond that <clears throat> we should perhaps talk about winter camping because Pilot makes quite a bit of fuss about the insulation on these vans Pilot says this is a grade three insulated camper and it's got 20 millimeters polyester fiberboard covered with aluminium foil around the vehicle then in the floor there's a sandwich with two layers of wood and 20 mil of styrofoam board of course you've got the double glazed windows and the heating as standard is a truma combi 4. now on this vehicle again it's been upgraded to a combi 6 eh now that means it can run from gas or mains electricity and you've got six kilowatt output that really is plenty in a van of this size the heater controls are above the sliding door alongside Pilot's other control panel, the new Experience 2. Now that gives you a touch screen, looks a bit like an iPad if you like, and it gives you control of your lighting, um, monitors your batteries, your water levels, and you can check the, the solar panel is uh, topping up your leisure battery as well, and that you've got your mains hookup. Now you can clearly see the premium finish I talked about with all this white. It does help to make what is quite a small motorhome feel really quite generously proportioned inside. You haven't got any feeling of being hemmed in in this vehicle. And look at the amount of kitchen space. Nice big area of worktop cover for your sink. So you've got a bit more space there. It does feel very nice. Now this is what Pilot calls its classic kitchen. Normally with a premium model you have a sliding worktop here, but Hayes says they prefer the look of the classic version, albeit in premium finish. Either way, you have two burner hob, and so this loose cover for the sink, plenty of worktop, this unusual little sort of glazed cupboard behind so keep your neat and tidy stuff on show there lots and lots of drawer space although unfortunately nowhere that's actually set out for cutlery so you'll need to invest in a cutlery holder but look lots and lots of drawer space all nicely soft closing a hidden bin in there more worktop at the end by the door so if you're serving up to people sitting outside that's even better and then the fridge at this end of the unit 85 litre compressor model so you just switch it on and forget it it runs off the leisure battery doesn't use gas um, but you've got remember two leisure batteries and your solar panel on this particular specification of vehicle so no worries about uh, using the compressor fridge that's a good option in a camper like this now pilot does offer bigger fridges but if you have one of those you'll lose this lovely worktop and lose the feeling of space created by having this open aspect down the off side of the vehicle there's an oven option too that goes above one of the bigger fridges but again it starts then to feel a bit more confined at the back of the vehicle all depends on how you're going to do your cooking and your camping i suppose and it's not just the kitchen that shows a bit more thought a bit more attention to detail than some of its rivals slide back this timber door and you've got 
a very practical use of space in the bathroom. Now, again, there's an option, the slatted floor, but as standard, the clever bit is the way the toilet bench cassette slides back out of the way when you're not using it. That gives you a lot more floor space, really important when you're showering. No curtain, of course, in there, so a good practical shower cubicle without extending into the aisle, as a lot of them do in this class of camper. And then you've got good storage above with little elasticated straps to keep everything in place. The mirror slides across so you've got twice as much storage as it at first appears. The only downside perhaps is the tip-up basin which is quite practical in terms of use of space but it's one of these backless types like we've seen on a lot of continental camper vans now and of course you have to be very careful not to use too much water because the water is constantly flowing out of the back of the sink there's nothing to keep it in there. Now, before we move on to the bed, it's worth mentioning this floor to ceiling, slim, but uh, floor to ceiling mirror as you come out of the washroom. And next to that is an equally slim wardrobe. Just room for a couple of coats in there. But then you're camping, so probably you're not gonna take the ball gown anyway. Well, I'm not. Right, and then the bed. It's 1.8 meters long by 1.34 meters wide. Now that might not sound overly generous, but those are the actual mattress dimensions. What Pilot have done quite cleverly is with these moldings, taken the bedroom area it, right into the sides of the, the Fiat panel van. So the actual usable length is about 1.94 meters. So that should be plenty for most people. You've got cupboards all around, uh, spotlights in the ceiling and this LED strip along this side. On this particular vehicle, you have to sleep with heads to the off side because it's been specified with the taller cupboard, the optional taller cupboard on the near side. As standard, you get a repeat of this one, but that does give you useful extra storage space. And of course, in a small van, extra storage space is always welcome. What perhaps isn't quite so welcome is this shelf, which further reduces headroom when you're waking up in the morning. I certainly think that tonight I'll be sleeping at this end of the bed, which seems considerably less claustrophobic without this shelf hanging above. You've got a little magazine pocket as well, or perhaps somewhere to, to put your phone, and of course, a couple of USB sockets as well. It's a very comfortable bed with a Bultex mattress and not only is the storage underneath it a big part of the appeal of a layout like this, but of course the bed itself. And I should just complete the bedroom aspect by talking about access because often these beds are quite high to get in and out of if you haven't got long legs. And if you order the drawer under the, uh, under the bed, the drawer in the garage area, you get also a slide out step as this end is effectively the other end of the drawer. Now that to me is a huge plus because it does make getting in a nice bed much, much easier. Now, I said at the outset that this was a very high spec example of a Pilot van. It includes, of course, the nine-speed automatic gearbox, which I've really grown to love as a feature. And now I have a certain amount of dread when I see a manual gearbox in a Fiat. They're just not the same. That is worth every penny of the £2,436 that it costs. On top of that, 120 bhp is standard in this Pilot. I wouldn't go for that 140 bhp on this one. And that comes with the Eco Pack, which gives you stop start. That's a further 948 pounds. The Interior Lux Pack, well, that gives you the leather steering wheel, um, steering wheel controls for the radio, and the chrome dials for the instruments. That uh, £302, well, not a lot, is it? 
Then there's the safety pack, gives you lane departure warning, traffic sign recognition, high beam recognition, and automatic lights and wipers. Sort of thing you expect on cars these days, 861 pounds. Blind spot detector, that's 600 pounds. Body, body colored door handle, seems a bit odd that you don't get those as standard when you get body colored uh, front bumper, but they're 78 pounds heated cab seats now today i think it's been about 28 degrees outside so i actually haven't tested the heated cab seats but were this a winter test i'd have been very grateful for them i like them in my cars heated cab seats don't often see in camper vans 426 pounds tire pressure monitoring 191 pounds and then the media pack just over a grand and that gives you this nice uh, touch screen display with your radio your reversing camera and everything on there all round all year round mud and snow tires 252 pounds another worthwhile option um, and it goes on from there and that is most of the spec on this particular vehicle things like the passenger airbag cab air conditioning esp traction plus they're all standard so it's not it's not basic as standard, it's just that Hayes Leisure have uh, really up spec this to give you the sort of spec you perhaps expect on a Volkswagen camper rather than a Fiat one. And, well, I think that's a good idea, really. People coming from cars into camper vans are going to expect this sort of specification. So, my verdict on the Pilot Van V600G Premium. Well, Pilot have had some false starts in the campervan sector with names like the Foxy Van and then they called them Danbury's. Well, forget all that. This, they've got it right. It won't appeal if you like that sort of country cottage on wheels feel in your campervan. This is much more automotive, much more VW California style if you like. It'll compete with the likes of Adria, Globe Car, Malibu at the top end of the camper van, fixed bed camper van class. Depending on the spec, you can have it quite affordable, 50 grand or so, but as it is here, 61 grand, that doesn't look dear when you look at all the equipment that's been put onto this vehicle. Certainly wouldn't want to be without the automatic gearbox. And well, what more would you add? Probably only if you need the extra berths. So there's a lot to like about this Pilot camper and not a lot to criticise. Hope you've enjoyed this video. More of them coming along all the time. Look out for our latest uh, video reviews and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.